Hello everyone, Elrond here with part 48 of my OT guide. So this is the part where we infiltrate the uh, Al-Qaeda and um, try to take their weapons of mass destruction and... Oh wait, they don't have any. I feel better already. I definitely need more of that. So, anyways. Once we kill the first batch of people, we, um... Try to lure more into these tents. Stainless. Cause these tents are nice bottlenecks, uh... Very machete-friendly. First, we gotta get them to spawn. So it's not this video but next video where things go super south for me and then as a result I have to uh, get extremely creative um, I'll have like nine health to play with um, in a spot that really doesn't want me to have nine health um, it's kind of inspired me to open the floor um, with a um, with an interesting concept uh, where I uh, make house calls um, essentially the plan would be um, for people to provide descriptions of their situation and I would use console commands to emulate those exact conditions and um, come up with creative ways to get people out of them. Um, I'll provide details for that in an epilogue at some point after I'm done with not only um, these Sunday videos, but my re-recording of Monday and the first bit of Tuesday. Um, for those of you who don't have any clue what I'm talking about, uh, my first 12 videos Who's in the daddy? original set had a weird blur effect sometimes uh, whenever I moved the camera angle. Um, so basically whenever I had the postal dude turn. And it was pretty bad. I mean, it was bearable, but not something I could really put the greatest seal of approval on. So, so I promise to go back and read them after completing the run. To be fair to people who have already watched them. Because that would have um, put me out um, a good amount of time and made them have to wait. And then didn't really seem fair, because if they were willing to tough it out, they deserve the rest of the run. Now, I don't think I intended to fall down here. I probably wanted to stay on the other side of the fence. Um, and, in case you're wondering, that whole technique right. with the um, that. shooting, that really works. And trying to shoot people, without them being in range, because I, I can see them, but they can't see me. That concept was a product of uh, this run. I, I had no clue that that would work so effectively in general um, in October. That's just something I kind of just messed with. I think I first noticed it on Wednesday inside the sewers. I never really talk about it for whatever reason, as far as I remember. But, you know, 
basically, if you see red, then it's a hit, pretty much. Um, so if you shoot something and you see blood splatter, um, then it's taking damage, so might as well keep shooting in that exact spot. And sometimes that works out great, but uh, sometimes you overstep and are going to get mowed down. Um, and so it, it's kind of a situational thing. You know, usually you'd hope to be in a better position than to need to resort to something like that, but um, in the in the military base, there are plenty of times where that's a useful little trick. I think in October, I just grenaded everything to death and tried to just you know ricochet grenades off of walls to get people into the right spots. Uh, this is probably a pretty good spot to save. But hiding behind those crates was a terrible place to um, to be when that patrol gets there. So I had to quickly jump back here. Um, so probably not the best location to save, but a uh, pretty good timing, rather. Um, and one so those guys came pretty quickly and. Waiting for them to approach and machete didn't really work out. Um, so I had to just uh, quickly dive into a more strategic spot. And I'm fishing for some health. Feel better already. Got a pipe. Getting ready to advance. guy that we um, sniped, he got a replacement buddy, well, with the rocket. The only thing about all these machetes and stuff is you can never tell if, um, someone's actually there, or if it's, uh, Ooh, someone that's weapon. lost a limb so that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, waiting to die. Mm, that stuff really works. So these guys, they, they'll become aggressive again once they're done trying to wave off fire, even if the fire's dissipated, um, from what we can graphically see. So keep that in mind. So we're going to move on. So pistol's probably the best for these long range one pixel situations. But for this guy, I decide not to one pixel him, it seems. I decide to go with a proper snipe. And probably a good idea since there were two of them right on top of each other. I wouldn't have noticed that otherwise. So, yeah. Sniper rifle's good for super long distance. Pistol's good if you um, definitely feel confident in eyeballing it. And I'm going to cut this video off at the top of these stairs, so I will see you next video. Good luck, have fun.